This is Math 142, and we are going to talk about um, graphing sine and cosine. And um, so what I'm talking about, like if this is x and this is y, you know, just a, a typical graph, what would uh, y equal sine of x look like? And what would y equals uh, cosine of x look like? So before we get down to that, that graph, let's take a look um, let's go back to how we've been thinking about sine and cosine so far. So if you'll notice right here, I have um, this circle. And then as I change this T value, T is the actual angle and it's in radians. So like one, remember that's about 57 degrees, one radian. So as I make T bigger, I can go around the circle and it keeps going. Um, or I can do negative rotations as well. So let me make it uh, zero. Boop, boop, boop. Ish. <laughs> and um, if we think of start thinking about this in terms of a unit circle, if this distance right here is one, um, notice right now it's at two pi or at zero. And as I go around, I hit four, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, etc. That sort of thing. Now let's think about sine. Um, remember, sine is height. So if I, if I think about sine as height, as this angle comes around like this, what I'm starting to, sorry about that, what I'm starting to measure, uh, as this angle comes around like this, what I'm measuring is the height. So for example, at pi over four, or close to that, it has a certain height. So the things that I am, um, that I'm gonna graph, the x-axis is the actual angle that I'm at, and the y is going to be that height right there. So let me get this out to zero. So you can see um, at zero or at two pi, the height is zero. So as I make this a little bigger, as I'm getting towards pi over four, notice here at pi over four, this height is this height right here. That's what I'm measuring. So at pi over four, we know if we look at our unit circle, it's about it's root two over two, it's about 0.7, it's up here. And if I get this all the way up to pi over two, my height is one, right? Because sine is about height, the highest it can go is one. And as I keep going three pi over two, it's back to root two over two. Uh, at pi, it's back to zero, the height is zero. And going around three pi over two, it's down here at negative one. And it keeps going, and sine just keeps going past 2 pi. So notice a couple of uh, elements about this. Um, at 0 degrees, our height is 0. At pi over 2 degrees, our height is 1, right, straight up. At pi, our height is 0. 3 pi over 2, it's at negative 1, straight down in the circle. And at 2 pi, it's back at 0. And then just keeps going for this. These are these functions are they're called periodic functions. They cycle. They have a period that repeats itself. And you can see actually the period is two pi. After after two pi, it starts to repeat itself. And no matter where I start, that's true. Like if I start back here at at negative pi over two, three pi over two. That's that's a distance of two pi. It starts to repeat itself. So let me get some. Uh, let me sketch some stuff here that we've just talked about. So sine, I, I remember that sine is about is about height. And sine on its own um, is gonna fluctuate between negative one and one. So I could you know, just kind of put a nice, li nice light dotted line along there. Um, and I kind of have these, these benchmark angles that I'm gonna use, zero, pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I'll call these x. So at 0 degrees, the height is 0. And at pi over 2, that's, that's straight up on that circle. It's 1. At pi, it's back down to 0. So let me label these. This is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. This is 2 pi. 3 pi over 2, it's down at negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's back to 1. And it just starts to repeat itself. Now that distance, when it repeats itself, is called the period. 
right now we have this kind of this midline, the zero line, that's called the midline. And we have another measure here too, which is that this distance from the midline to the extreme, uh, that's called the amplitude. And our amplitude's one because it's one from the midline to the to the extreme. So we notice that sine, since it's height, it uh, it starts at zero, goes up to one, and back back down. Again, um, our height starts at zero. Sorry, our height starts at zero measuring this right there and then as that angle gets bigger our height increases maxes out at one when we're at pi over two comes back down to zero when we hit pi again notice we're measuring height for sine as we, as we go around all right so that's what sine looks like so let's think about what what cosine looks like and now remember cosine uh, is a measure of of width. It's the it's the x value in this. So as we think about the width, uh, when I'm out here, it's this line right here that I'm measuring. Kind of my 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 measure from the from the center of the circle to the edge. It's I put it here so you can kind of see that it's here, but it's like this distance right here. So notice when I get up to pi over two, my my width is zero. When I'm out here at zero or at two pi, my width is one. And then when I start going over here past two uh, pi over two, uh, my width gets negative. It's going in the negative direction. So again, when I'm at zero degrees, and I'm talking about cosine, cosine is at one because it has maximum width when I'm at zero degrees. And as I go out to pi over two, now my width is zero. Down to pi, it's negative one back up to two pi at zero again, and it just keeps repeating itself. And notice this has the same, same midline as sine. It has the same shape as sine. It just kind of starts in a different spot. Um, it has the same amplitude, same extremes. So uh, let's go back to this, and let's talk about what cosine looks like. Um, again, it has these same, same extremes. It has that same amplitude, but cosine is width, and at zero degrees, we have maximum width. And I still have this pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, kind of as my benchmarks, my extremes and my midlines. So the thing I know about cosine is at zero degrees, it starts at one. It's going to start at a maximum. Then it's gonna come down to zero, then down to negative one, back up to zero, back up to positive one, and it repeats itself. So cosine looks like this. And you can see that, that cosine is just a shift of sine of pi over two of 90 degrees. Remember we said that cosine is the complementary sine. Um, 90 degrees makes complementary angle. They're exactly the same if you're 90 degrees off. All right, so there are our, our basic functions, what sine looks like and what cosine looks like. So we're going to use these. These are our parent functions. And we're going to use these extreme points as well to help us start to think about shifting these around. Y equals sine x looks like this. And it has, uh, has these values right here, those extremes. Uh, cosine looks like this and has these. So let's take something like um, y equals sine x plus 5. And I'll bet you have kind of a, a good intuitive guess about what that does. So let's take a look on, on Desmos for it. If you've never used Desmos before, it's a great, uh, it's a great tool uh, to practice with. And notice like I have this pi over 4, pi over 2. Um, just so you know how to do this if you want to use Desmos. On your x-axis, change your step to pi over 4. And then, and then that'll change this to this. It's automatically defaults to radians. You can change things to degrees too. So uh, let me graph. Um, I think I had, I think, <laughs> I forgot what I wrote down. I think that I wrote down sine, um, sine plus five. Yeah, sine x plus five. So here's uh, y equals sine x. Here's what it looks like. As we know, we just talked about that. Sine is height, so it starts at zero. 
gets bigger, then smaller, starts repeats itself after 2 pi. So how about y equals um, sine x plus 5? And notice this plus 5 is outside of the sine x. x is being signed, and then we're adding 5 to it. Notice what happens. The whole thing is, is just shifted up 5. So this was the, this here was at 0, is now at 5. All of the 2 pi's, you know, all of these line up just great. And um, what was an extreme at 1 now just gets shifted up at 6. So if I add something out here, if I add 5 or I add 3, or let's say I subtract 2, notice it just moves it up and down. So if I say this is minus a and I just make a slider, um, I'll say plus a, sorry, and I make this a slider, as a gets increases it moves it up, as a decreases it moves it down, you know, less than 0, you're subtracting. So adding something inside of or outside of a function just moves it up and down. Um, and what I like to think about, like, if let's say that this is sine x plus 2, I just move my midline up to 2, and I know my extremes, my amplitude is 1 off of there. And the same thing would happen with, with cosine. So if, if this was cosine of x, and cosine of something, uh, cosine of x plus something, it just moves the cosine up and down. So... Boo, boo, boo. If I go back to sketching this, this y equals sine x plus 5, it's just going to take this, this sine function and move it up 5. So I still have my um, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, x values, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I've just shifted the whole thing up. So my midline's at 5. My amplitude's still 1, so it's going to go up to 6 and down to 4. It's still kind of bounded in that region. But then it's the same shape. Sine starts in the middle, starts at what was 0, starts at the midline, goes up, comes back down, goes back up. And there's a sketch of sine x plus 5. So if I'm, if I'm just adding something to it, it's going to move it. If I'm subtracting it, it's going to move it down. So let's keep um, staying outside the function. What if I multiplied it by something? For example, what if I went 3 times sine x? Now this isn't sine x plus 3. That would just move it up 3. This is sine x times 3. So let's take a peek at Desmos, see what it would do. So I have y equals sine x. So I decided to say y equals 3 times sine x. Notice what it does is it, it keeps the same shape, but it stretches it. It stretches it in this direction. It stretches it up and down. It's stretching those y values. So now, instead of having an amplitude of 1, it has an amplitude of 3. Still has the same period. Still repeats itself uh, out to 2 pi. But now it's extreme. Instead of being at 1, is up here at 3. So if I multiply by something... Um, on the outside of the function, on the outside of the side, it's just, it's just stretching it. Um, and how about if I uh, multiplied it by one half? You can probably predict what's going to happen. It's going to make it half as big. Yeah, it's going to um, dilate it. You know, it's going to make it, sm it's dilating both ways. It's going to dilate it in a, in a negative direction. It's going to make it smaller. And also, if I multiplied by negative one, it's going to change all those y values by multiplying them by negative 1. It's going to flip it over. So basically what was at 1 is now at negative 1. Or notice if I multiply by negative 3, flips it over, stretches it by 3 in that direction. So let's give uh, that a try then. So y equals, let's say it was y equals um, 10 times cosine. So if we're going to do that, that means I still have the same period. It's still going to repeat itself at 2 pi. But now, instead of going all the way to uh, just to 1, it 
goes all the way to 10 and to negative 10. Still has that midline at zero. And cosine, I know that cosine's about width. Cosine starts at the extreme. So cosine would start at one, but that's been multiplied by 10. So it actually gets stretched like that. So as we multiply by these values, um, we're stretching it. And we could be flipping it if it's a negative value. So let's just sketch a couple of graphs here. Um, let's say I had y equals 4 cosine of x plus 3. So I noticed a couple of things are going on here. I notice it's being shifted up by 3. And I know it's being stretched by 4. So if it's shifted up by three, my midline's gonna be um, up at three. So there's three, so my midline will be at three. Should make this x-axis a little <laughs> a little worse, a little better. Um, my amplitude now got shifted to four. So if this is where three is at, four, five, six, seven, it's gonna get all the way up to seven, and all the way down to negative one. Um, again, it'll help if that's a little straighter. And maybe in a better spot, sorry. All right, um, I still have these, uh, these benchmark spots, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. But I know it's gonna stretch from negative seven down to negative one. Again, my amplitude is four, my midline is three, is that number. Now cosine is width, cosine starts at the extreme and then comes down to the midline at pi over two, goes down to the bottom extreme at pi. See, that would have been a negative one, but it's multiplied by four, so. Oh, and then three added to it. So it's up at three and then down four from there. Uh, back to zero, back up to here. So here is a sketch, one period, 0 to 2 pi, of what 4 cosine x plus 3 would look like. Let's try just a couple more of these. How about y equals uh, negative 3 sine x plus 10. Wow, so let's think about what that is going to be like. So first off, it's been shifted up 10. So it's a... It's going to be a ways from the uh, from the x axis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten, and its amplitude is three. So ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it'll eventually get up to thirteen and down to seven. Nine, eight, seven. And ten's the midline. Now, I know it still has this, this 2 pi period. It's going to repeat itself after 2 pi. Half of 2 pi is pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So sine, um, if it was just 3 sine, not negative 3 sine, um, sine's still going to always start in the middle. Now sine usually goes up, but since it's been negated, it's going to go down. So it'll go down negative 3, uh, I'm sorry, down 3 from there back up to the midline at pi up to the extreme at 3 pi over 2 down to the midline at 2 pi and then i can just sketch it so the transformations that we've done so far have been adding and multiplying outside of the function like sine x plus 5 or 3 times sine x so let's look at what happens if i go y equals sine of 2x so now notice what's going on is that I'm having some multiplication that's going on inside the function. Everything that we are doing outside the function up till now have, have affected the y values, basically moved it up and down, stretched it or shifted it. And so now we're getting inside the function and we're messing with the x values before the function gets to give it its shape. So let me pull up, oops, not that. Let me pull up my Desmos calculator. There's sine of 2x, and I'm going to uh, stretch it out this way a little bit. And now I'm going to graph uh, y equals sine of 2x. 
And notice what happens. It still has this 0 to 2 pi thing, but it's making it happen twice as fast. It's, it's compressing it in, an, in the x direction. So this actually gets a full cycle done in pi instead of in 2 pi. And I could make it happen even, even faster if I made this a, a 4x. Notice now it usually repeats itself in 2 pi. That's, that's this one. But this y equals 4x repeats itself in a fourth of that time. Or notice it does it, it repeats itself four times in the amount of time it takes standard sign to go through one period. So what we're doing when we're uh, multiplying inside the function is we're compressing it. We're making things happen faster. Uh, similarly, if I, if I wanted to slow it down, I could make this um, a 1 half times x. And notice there's my standard x. But now what I've made is I've made this period repeat itself. I, I not repeat itself. This period stretch out to 4 pi instead of happen within 2 pi. It's making it happen half as fast slowing it down. So what's great is I know that my typical period is 2 pi, my parent period for just sine. So um, if I were to make this this 2, notice what I've done is I've, I've cut that period in half, right? I've had it happen twice as fast. Or if I made this into a 4, I've cut, I've divided that period of 2 pi by 4, that multiplier. That's a good thing for us to think about. So if I have this uh, y equals sine of 2x, I know I just did it on Desmos. But what happens is my period now just gets changed. So my period is typically 2 pi. But since I'm multiplying by 2, I can say the period happens twice as fast. So the period of this actually happens in pi. So really what I'm doing is I'm taking all these values right here and I'm dividing them all by 2. So, there's a couple ways for you to think about this. Um, what I like to do is just go, like, I know my period's pi, so this will repeat itself by pi. And then this is broken up into fourths. So I can go half of pi is, is pi over 2. Half of pi over 2, since this is a half, this is a fourth. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Right, just cut it in half, divide by 2, cut it in half, divide by 2, or multiply by 1 half. And this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. And then I still have this amplitude of 1. Um, and I know that sine starts at 0 goes up to the extreme, back to the midline, back down like that. And there's my sketch of that. Now, if you didn't like the way that I went about scaling this x-axis, what you can do is you can take those, um, those typical benchmark angles. And since I know that this is a 2, you can just divide them all by 2. Things that go on inside the function are counterintuitive. You know how this says 2 times x. Um, since we're making things happen twice as fast, we're dividing all of these by 2. So 0 divided by 2 is 0. Uh, pi over 2 divided by 2. Think of multiplying by 2 as the same. Um, sorry, dividing by 2, same as multiplying by 1 half. So pi over 2 times 1 half is, is pi over 4. Pi divided by 2 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 times a half, right? So 2 times 2. Sorry, I said 2, and I meant to write 3. 3 pi over 4, 2 pi divided by 2 is pi, and you get those values. You can do it either way. You can change each one, or you can go like, what's the period? Cut it in half, cut it in half again. So let's sketch a graph of y equals cosine of 3x. So 3x, this is happening three times as fast. So it will be this one, but compressed by 3. So my typical period is 2 pi, but I know that this is going to be divided by 3. So my period is going to be 2 pi over 3. We'll get really good at fractions in this course. We do a lot of work with fractions, with these radians. So 2 pi over 3. Still uh, 1 to negative 1 for my, my amplitude's 1. 
So now let me think about this. Again, what you can do if you want is you can go back to this. 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And since this is times 3, you're going to divide all those by 3. And now you get 0. Dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by a third. So when you divide by 3, you just multiply the denominator by 3. So pi over 6, pi over 3. 3 pi over 6, we'll, we'll clean that up in a sec, and 2 pi over 3. I know that 3 over 6 is 1 half, so this is the same as pi over 2. So 2 pi over 3. Notice half of 2 pi over 3 is uh, pi over 3. Like if I cut this in half, I'm dividing out that 2, which is that value that I got here. Half of pi over 3 is pi over 6. I'm just showing you both ways to do it. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. Or you can do it this way and then just, you know, grab these and put them on there. Uh, cosine starts at the extreme, goes down, and back up. Let me make a little note up here. Um, if I had y equals a times sine, and this sine, this could also be cosine. So if I have something like um, a times b, uh, a times sine or cosine, bx uh, plus k, we've been talking about what this does. This affects the period. So the period now becomes um, 2 pi over b whatever that value is. This moves it up down. In other words, this tells you where the midline is at. And this part right here stretches it in the y direction. So this also uh, is what the amplitude is. So I have all these pieces where I can stretch it up and down, I can compress it or stretch it, in the x direction and I can move it up and down. So let's sketch a graph of this uh, y equals 4 times cosine of 2x plus 3. I've got a lot of pieces here. Um, so I'll tell you the way that I like to think about it. So first off, I know my midline's at 3. So I know that this is going to be stretched out there. Um, I know this has an amplitude of 4. So from that 3, Four, five, six, seven. It's going to get up to seven. And from that three, it's going to get down to negative one. Again, because that amplitude is four. And the three just gives me that. So now let me worry about this, this 2x. Um, this 2x is making things happen twice as fast. So typically my period is 2 pi, but I can divide by that multiplier. Now I know this is going to repeat itself every pi radian. So there's pi. Great. Um, so um, half a pi is pi over 2. Half a pi over 2 is pi over 4. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. Again, if you don't like doing it that way, start with this. And since this is times 2, you're going to multiply everything here by a half. So 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, uh, 2 pi divided by 2 is, is pi, and you get those values. Great, and now let's just think about cosine. Cosine starts at the extreme, comes down to the midline, down to the lower extreme, back up to the midline, back up. There it is. I want to do one more just like this. All right, y equals negative 2 sine one third x, sine of 1 third x, that quantity plus 5. So we could do, um, you know, we could do this part first, or we could do this part first. I think I'll deal with that, um, those x values first. So 1 third, so typically my period is 2 pi, but this 1 third is, is slowing it down making it go slower. So if I divide this by a third, um, 
it's taken three times as long to happen. Dividing by a fraction, 2 pi divided by 1 third is the same as, as 2 pi times 3. So the period of this is 6 pi. So this actually repeats itself every 6 pi. Midline's up at 5. There's 5. Amplitude's 2. So it gets up to 7, down to 3. Now let's see. 6 pi. Half of 6 pi is 3 pi. Half of 3 pi is 3 pi over 2. Uh, 3 pi over 2. 6 pi over 2. 9 pi over 2. 12 pi over 2. Again, if you don't like doing it that way, so if you if you didn't like to do it this way again, you can take those uh, those values zero pi over two pi three pi over two two pi those extremes, and um, since this is multiplied by a third, multiply it by three. So zero three pi over two three pi nine pi over two six pi, and you get those values. And that's, this is not a bad way to do it. This is a good way to do it, particularly for something that we'll talk about next time. So sine, the thing I know about sine is it starts in the middle. It typically goes up to an extreme and then back down. But since this is negated, instead of going up, it's going to go down to an extreme, and then it's going to come back up, back down. And there's what that sine wave looks like. So give these a practice. Practice um, graphing them. Give them a try. I really suggest while you're working on them that you have Desmos open. Um, again, it's free to use. Just go to desmos.com. Um, change this x-axis to something like pi over 4 or something that you want it to be. And you can enter pi just by, by literally typing in pi, pi, um, over 4, whatever you want it to be. You can zoom out, zoom in. This is a great program to use. And if you're not sure what things do, you know, like, you're like when I multiply, what happens again? Just try, you know, you can just play around with stuff and see what you get. It's a great program to use. All right, give the problems a try. Uh, message me if you have questions or post some questions in the forum.